Hello, my name is Tanya Henny, and I will be talking about the mongooses of Hawaii. So, introduction to Hawaii. In 1872, sugarcane planters released mongooses in Jamaica. Soon after, Hawaii followed, and in 1883, they released 27 mongooses in Ilo, and this was to help with the rat infestation of the sugarcane fields. And then again in 1885, they release another another set of them in the, on the Hamawakua coast. And then since then, they have increased exponentially. Are now a present day issue. Here is just a a figure of the world and globally, and just showing where their native ranges, where they actually are from, where they live, and then showing the many places that have introduced these mongooses into their country and the years that they did. So what are mongooses? I'm sure plenty of you have probably seen them around. I know I have on campus and just around Oahu in general. So mongooses are always like animal. Their common name small Indian mongoose or small Asia mongoose or Javan mongoose. Their scientific name is Herpestes javanicus. They are, ma they are mammals. Their diet, it depends on their location. Size for head to body is about 7 to 25 inches, tail 6 to 21 inches. Their weight is can be up to 11 pounds. Description, center body type, short legs, short brown fur, and a tail that makes up about 40% of their length. Habitat. So, in general, they prefer dry natural areas and avoid rainy areas. However, in Hawaii, given that our climate, they prefer humid areas and they exploit these wet areas. So, physiology and behavior. I read about this in a paper and I thought it was just interesting, so I want to include it. Their uh, mean body temp is about 39.5 degrees Celsius. Their mean resting heart rate is 252 beats per minute. Mean resting respiratory rate is 63 breaths per minute. They can also maintain their body core temp from a range of 0 to 41 degrees Celsius. When heat stress, they pant and salivate on their chest and forelimbs. They respond to cold by raising their metabolic rates. Uh, they also have good vision and can determine colors. Most of the fat is stored in their tail. They're entirely diurnal. They can climb trees or swim, but rarely do. When killing prey, they bite the back of their the head, crushing their skull. They forage under cover and are hard to observe when foraging. They also form shallow burrows for use as dens. So continued, they have 12 distinct varieties of vocalizations, including a contact call used by young mongooses and their mothers. There's a feeding, cry, a feeding call and then several agnostic cries that are graded by the intensity of their stress levels. Young small mongooses also show strong following responses and follow their mother very closely until they are fully grown. So what do they eat? So mongooses in Hawaii are opportunistic predators. Uh, they eat primarily insects as well as birds, eggs, and plants. However, their diets vary depending on where they're living. Some areas they uh, show that they were preferred crabs, rats, cockroaches, and then in Oahu on Pearl Harbor, there was a report, there was a study done that showed that a diet, their diet consisted of reptiles. So here from that study uh, is a table that I wanted to show of different locations around the world where these mongooses live and a, this showed a sample size percentages of these different animals that they eat and it was taken from their stomach samples as you can see Hawaii has the highest percentages of what was found in their stomach were invertebrates
means reproduction. So females are pregnant from February through August. The males produce sperm year round. Gestation is 49 days. The litter size is unknown. However, a study that was conducted showed that the mean of 2.2 embryos with the range of one to five. Pups began to follow mom on hunts around six weeks of age, and they reached their sexual maturity at four months. So what are the impacts that they have in Hawaii? Uh, they have no natural predators and they can adapt very well. They spread rapidly and prey on native wildlife. They have a high rate of reproduction. Sea turtles suffer from predation of their eggs, as well as eight uh, Hawaiian federally endangered birds suffer from nest predation. And then ground nesting birds are at a particular risk. So here I just included some photos of the birds that are being affected in Hawaii. Here we have the Hawaiian mongoose, also known as nene. Hawaiian petrel, Hawaiian crow, Hawaiian coot, Hawaiian silt, Hawaiian duck, the Hawaiian galeno, and the Newell shearwater. So, what is being done? So, their main method used that they're using is traps. They also use poisoned meat and place these in certain areas. They also euthanize them. And then they also place fences around wetlands and areas that need protection. However, trapping is expensive and requires a lot of work. And once small gooses are removed, the more just come right on in and just fill that empty habitat. So it's like a nonstop continuous cycle. So here uh, are some, a little a chart showing er eradication tools that are used and then the analysis of these tools. And then to the right is just a photo of them doing a live trapping. So why should we care? We must, I feel, continue to protect Indian animals, especially in Hawaii, because this is a place we call home, and Hawaii is such a unique and beautiful place. So I'll look to the future. So I feel as we continue with our lives, we should start to think about the issues that are happening around us. And the first step, I feel, to any problem is to educate. Once we start to educate ourselves on issues, we can start to educate others, and there we can plan on a strategic plan. Uh, education is key, as well as getting the word out, and hopefully we can help restore the ecosystems around us and appreciate all that Mother Earth presents us. Thank you. Here is just a page of my sources that I used. Again, thank you, and have a great day.